So we have our typical wall section over here, and we have our section one over here. I am going to correct where that callout is. See the callout now says to uh, 03 detail two. It's perfect. Um, I am going to change the name of this view and call that just section with all caps. And that way we have a consistency here with how we're naming things. Okay, um, I'm going to activate the wall section and start to put in some annotations. So starting from the bottom, um, one of the things that we need to see here is um, uh, an indication of where our grade is going to be and um, hatch patterns to show where clean fill is and where undisturbed earth is. You can do that one of two ways. So this way is going to be using just detail lines. So I would go to annotate and I'm going to create some detail lines and I have a control over whether or not I want the line to be medium, thin, or wide. For this, because it's going to represent grade, I want it to be set as a wide line. And then I can just create a line here to show that. Okay. Now if you want to see the line weights, you turn them on, you can see the line weights uh, expressed. I leave the line weights off when I'm uh, picking things and working in model view, but it's maybe better to turn them on when you're in a detail view. Next we're going to create a detail line that would be um, a, another wide line and we're going to kind of pick a spot somewhere here and just create a line that comes down to um, the uh, bottom of the footing. Um, now this area here we want to fill with a hatch pattern and I know this is going to seem a little bit redundant but I like to have this line be a separate line than a region line uh, because I feel like I have a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to create a filled region and with a filled region the default filled region that you get is a diagonal cross hatch. You can look to see if there are any others. There aren't any others loaded right now. So I want to edit the type of this and I want to create a new one and we'll call this uh, clean fill. And I want the fill pattern, instead of being the diagonal crosshatch, I want it to be a different fill pattern that matches clean fill. So as soon as I click on this area across from fill pattern, you'll see this little ellipsis button. We can click on that. And I think the best um, or closest thing to clean fill hatch that we could use would be either the sand or sand dense. So I'm going to pick sand, hit OK, and then that sand hatch will now be associated with this clean fill um, hatch type going to hit OK. I want to use thin lines or even invisible lines uh, you could use to define the same boundary that's going to end up being uh, the clean fill area. So I'm just matching the line work that I already created for my grade and my um, uh, the edge between the, the undisturbed earth and the fill. So that didn't quite hit the mark there. So let me fix that and fix this. This does need to be a closed loop shape. Once you hit the checkbox, then we end up with that clean fill in that area. Uh, next, I'm going to create a, a P line here that defines our area for our uh, undisturbed earth. So I would do a mask region again. Um, edit type, duplicate, let's call this earth. And I want to switch the pattern to the earth pattern that's in here already. There it is. Um, so I just hit OK and then start defining the area that will have the earth. And this is, I'm going to go beyond where the boundaries of the um, view are because I, do, I don't want to see the other end of this. Um, I don't want to see the boundaries of these lines uh, as an edge, I just want to see them kind of disappear. All right, so that's going to be filled with clean, um, undisturbed earth. So that's what we want it to look like. Now for the um, perimeter drained pipes that we would have here, 
we'd use a similar tool but we would use a masked region and I can fill or create a circle this time with a radius of 2. We can do that at the same time and then when I hit the checkbox and look at that then those are going to look like um, you know these little uh, perimeter drain pipes. We can select those edit the boundary and I believe we can change the way the um, uh, boundary edges of those masked regions behave so I can change those to wide lines for instance so when I hit the checkbox we get um, the perimeter drain pipes so you could carry on with this and create a crushed stone area here um, and, and keep going uh, now for callouts if I hit the A the, the uh, te text object uh, in annotate we can create just a uh, piece of text with no leaders so I can label that area that's going to be clean fill we can also create text that has leaders and there's straight leader one segment two segment leaders or we can use arcs or curves whatever you'd like it's your choice um, I'm going to use the uh, two segment leaders and that way I can point to our perimeter drain pipes and I want to add a second leader that also points to this one so I can select that and just hit the plus sign up here to add a second arrow and then you can have the arrow pointing to that uh, second drain pipe you can just grab the nodes at the ends of the arrows to adjust where they hit so this I will call out here Undisturbed Earth. Did I spell that right? Doesn't look right. Um, and then we can put in a dimension here that indicates our size of our footing and also the size of our um, stem wall. Now I like these two dimensions just to say equal and equal. So I can click on that dimension and I can replace the text with just EQ replace text EQ um, let's uh, now uh, oh, uh, add the information to our slab so in the slab at the bottom quarter there should be a, a line that indicates that there's welded wire fabric so I'm going to go to detail line and I'm going to create a wide line and I'm going to put it in as a solid line to begin with but then I'm going to select it and I can right click and choose to override graphics and view by element and in here I can make that line type any line type I'd like and the dot dash dot line type uh, when we hit apply that's what I want to see to represent that welded wire fabric now I can go to the uh, uh, text tool and point out what we have here 4 inch concrete slab with W 1.4 by W 1.4 welded wire fabric at bottom quarter typical now this is I'm glad this happened because uh, this is common when you have a crop region this is telling you that the way that you put that annotation in is beyond the crop region so you can just close this warning and we can turn on our crop region and we can expand it until we see that um, note show up and so that just means we've got to make that a bit wider so we can fit that information in or you can slide it over a bit so that it fits properly within your uh, ex existing crop region so that's that's all that that means um, I think it makes sense for us to put um, an aligned dimension from here to here and indicate that we want a minimum wall height here so this says five foot uh, seven foot five and three quarters but I may want to say replace with 
uh, 7 foot 4 inch minimum. Uh, that way there's a little bit of wiggle room um, that we want headroom of at the bottom of the floor joist down to the uh, top of slab to be this minimum and then these are, are obviously giving us an idea of what we're shooting for. Here we're missing a, um, a 2 by 6 and I'm going to add it here as a detail component but there's going to be another video where we actually add it as a, as a uh, swept uh, component but for now we're going to add it as a detail component. If I go into components here under annotate that's different than going to components here under architecture. This is going to allow you to, to download a detail component. I'm going to check to see if we already have loaded in here uh, nominal lumber sizes which we do, dimensional lumber sections. If you do not then you can go to load family and go to detail items, wood and plastic, wood framing and get your sectional lumber here and pick the sizes that you want. What I did was simply chose everything here in the catalog and then loaded it all into the project. So let's do that again. We go to component and I want to find the 2 by 6 in the list. And then I just need to use the space tool, space bar, to get that into the right position and then we would see a 2 by 12 I believe here. Let's see what the floor note 2 by 10. So I want to load another uh, a component as a 2 by 10 and place that in the proper position inside the floor system. If you want a double rim you can go ahead and put a second one in there. And then we could move up to the top here and put our header in here. So um, the, our header I think will work out what it's supposed to be but let's try 2 by 6's, two of them and they would go in right here and then we would need a double top plate and then we were done. Now that happens sometimes where you think you place it and then it just goes away so I'm just going to copy it and I haven't quite figured out why it does that um, and then we're, we're all set with what's in there for components. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at the location of the roof on the wall and make sure it's in the right position so it creates a bird's mouth. And we will uh, continue to annotate and add insulation and things like that to this wall section.